Hey everybody, Boston Blaisdell here. Hope you're doing well. In today's Second Life University video, I'm going to be teaching you all about how to create, edit, and share your visual environments within the Second Life viewer. This is often referred to as the Environmental Enhancement Project, or EEP for short. EEP is a set of tools which allow you to have complete control over the look and feel of your environment, providing a more realistic and immersive experience in the virtual world. Perhaps you'd like a mood-enhancing beach scene to shoot some photos with your sun-kissed avatars, or even a hazy ambient setting for absorbing some panoramic landscapes. You can even utilize some of the pre-built settings to instantly alter how your environment appears, or you can have fun with creating your own custom-built environments and then save them to be reused, shared, or even sold on the Second Life Marketplace. We'll be covering several topics in this video, including how to apply basic and advanced environmental settings, creating and editing your own environments, such as skies, water and day cycles, and how to purchase and apply EEPs from the marketplace. Since we'll be covering a lot in this video, feel free to hit the pause button if you need to stop and write some notes. We'll have the chapters listed in the description, so you can jump back to the relevant sections when you need to. This video is mainly focused on the official Second Life viewer, However, most of the concepts apply across all viewers and you'll still gain a lot from this video if you're using a third party viewer such as Firestorm or Black Dragon. And with all of that said, let's get into it. Okay, so let's begin with where to find your environment settings. There's a few different ways of accessing them. The first place you can look is under your world menu located at the top of your viewer. Then select the environments button and it will open up a sub menu. Useful tip here, I'm going to temporarily pin this menu to my screen by clicking on the two horizontal bars here. This saves me from needing to go back to the main menu when I need quick access to my settings. There's four basic presets which I'm cycling through here. These are sunrise, midday, sunset and midnight. You'll see that the environment will immediately change appearance and when you apply any of these presets, they're only going to be visible to you. Other avatars are only going to see what's been configured on their viewer. On the Second Life viewer, you can also type shortcuts to apply the presets. For example, with midday, it's Control, Shift and Y. And for sunset, it's Control, Shift and N. To switch over to the environmental settings which have been created by the owner of that region, click Use Shared Environment. I'd recommend using this if you're visiting a scenic destination and you want to get the full experience of the region. If other residents are also choosing to use the shared environment settings, it means that we'll all be seeing the same environment as each other. Later on, we'll be looking at how we can create our own shared environment settings for an area or region. Let's dive into some of the other environments that you have access to from within the viewer. There's a large number of EEPs which are already available to you. And these are a lot more dynamic than the basic settings which we looked at before. The first time you ever make use of these, you'll need to copy them over to your inventory. So let me show you how to do that. First, open up your inventory. If you collapse all of your folders, you'll see that it's split between your main section and your library. The EEPs can initially be found within the library folder. So just open that up, then go to environments, and we're going to look at skies. Each of the skies have been grouped and named with different titles. Some of them are descriptive and give you an idea of how it's going to look. And others, well, you probably have no idea until you try it. I'm trying these out by right clicking the sky and selecting apply only to myself. This applies it to my environment and we can cycle through as many of these as we like. I personally tend to use the Anan Adored series of EEPs particularly in my videos and my adverts, I use the Light Explosion and Realistic Ambient EEP. And these are good to use if you want a neutral tone with natural lighting. The next step is to move these over from our library to our main inventory folder. We can either copy them all over at once or just select the ones that we require. So select the objects, right click and copy. Then go to your main inventory Find the settings folder, right click and paste. If you're a brand new user and you don't see the settings folder, 
you'll need to create a new setting first by clicking on the plus button, new setting, and then choosing a new sky, water, or day cycle. And then your settings folder is going to be generated. The position of the sun is going to make a big difference to how your world looks. In Second Life, we can fully control this. To do this, let's go to our personal lighting controller. This can be found under world, environment, and personal lighting. The position of the sun can be controlled by the mini yellow sphere around the globe, or by using the sliders below, which are named azimuth and elevation. Moving the sun is needed if you want to control the placement of lighting and shadows, which is particularly useful for any photography or videos that you'd like to produce. Anything you do here in the personal lighting controller will only remain visible in your active login session, and it's going to disappear when you log out. If the sun is greyed out, that's because it's gone behind the globe to the rear of the horizon. You can use these arrows to fine tune the position and bring it back round to the front side of the globe. And here I'm just creating a sunset effect by moving the sun around the ocean line. The environment that I'm working with here is the Barcelona Eep, which can be found in your library and then moved across to your inventory like I showed you earlier. For lighting and shadows to show in their full effect, you'll need to ensure that advanced lighting model is enabled via your graphics preferences. To do this, you can click Ctrl and P on your keyboard, then go to your graphics tab. And from here, you can toggle it to on and off. The reason you may want to switch this off is because you'll find that it's a bit more taxing on your computer resources. So depending on your computer build, you may find that your graphics card isn't powerful enough to keep this switched on all the time. If you ever find that your second life is lagging, where everything slows down or freezes, this is the first setting that I'd recommend disabling. Remember when you use the personal lighting function, this is only going to be visible temporarily during your active login session. You can't save your environment from this view. If you want to further edit or create an environment of your own and save it, let's have a look at how to do that using the fixed environment editor. First, I'm going to open up a pre-existing EAP. We're using the Barcelona environment here. We need to right click it from our inventory and then click open. This is going to instantly change the environment to the one that we've selected and open up our fixed environment editor. The editor is split across three main tabs and here under the atmosphere and lighting tab, this is where we can control the tones and mood of the environment. For example, we can click on this ambient color box and this is going to open up a color picker. I can use the slider on the right hand side to control the brightness of my scene. More brightness if we go up and less if we go down. And then perhaps we'd like to change the global color from blue to a pinkish tone by using the color picker. The RGB and HSL color values are going to automatically update on the left hand side as we cycle through different colors. We're then going to combine this with the blue horizon and blue density boxes. You can think of blue horizon as the ability to adjust the base color of the sky, whereas blue density affects the color intensity and effects. So I'm just adding a bit of a lime green hue to the sky by moving the color picker on the grid. And you can play between the horizon and density boxes to control the global effects for the sky. We have even more finer controls here with the haze horizon and density. The haze horizon will affect the height of the haze. If we go higher on the slider, it means that the haze will reach into the sky and the horizon itself is going to become obscured from view. This looks a little bit too intense and the only time I'd usually use this is if I need a very bright backlit photo, maybe for a portrait shot. Combine this with haze density to affect the amount of haze that you see in the atmosphere. At higher levels, it's going to create more fogginess, whereas if the density is set to zero, the haze horizon will have no effect. Let's have a look at the clouds menu. Clouds will of course create more atmosphere in your scene. We can add more to the sky by moving the slider up. The higher we go, it's going to form more of an overcast effect. Cloud scale in comparison, is going to change the size of the clouds. So moving the slider to the right will increase the size and create more atmosphere. 
Another useful feature here is controlling the direction and speed of the clouds. For precise settings, we can type the coordinates into the X and Y boxes. Alternatively, we can drag this triangle from the center point. If we wanted our clouds to remain completely static, we could set these both to zero. We can also adjust the textures or the images for the sun, moon and clouds. Just click into the box and you can choose one of the proprietary textures which are already in the viewer. When you're ready to save your environment, rename it with a title of your choice. Click Save As and then click the second Save Confirmation screen. Once you've saved this, it's going to appear in your inventory where you can right click and then apply to myself. Or alternatively, you can apply to parcel if you have ownership of that area and you want to set this as your default environment. And this is what others will see if they choose to use the shared environment like we looked at earlier. If you prefer to create a brand new environment from scratch and not use one of the existing EAPs, open up your inventory, go to your settings folder, right click it, go to new settings. And this is where we can either create a new sky, water or day cycle. Once you've named this, you can open it up and you're going to have access to the fixed environment editor, which we looked at before. The day cycle editor is going to give you control over the sky during Second Life's day and night cycle. So as the time of day progresses, the sky is going to animate and shift between different looks. To create a basic day cycle, type a new name into the preset name box. Move the yellow arrow slider to the time of day. Click on add sky. This is going to add a keyframe node to the timeline. Make sure it's selected in green and then click on load sky. Select the sky preset that you'd like to use for this time of day. And then we just want to continue clicking on add sky at various times of the day. The yellow arrow above the timeline represents your current view. Once you've created something, you can then click the play button to preview it. And the yellow indicator will move along the timeline, showing what the day cycle is going to look like as time progresses. When you have a day cycle timeline that you're happy with, you can use the clone track button to copy it to other altitudes. If you do want a more detailed step-by-step -step process for how to do this, just follow this link and it will take you to a Second Life article. Now you may be thinking, this all looks great, but I don't want to spend hours creating my own environments. Well, the good news is that there's a huge range of environments which you can purchase on the Second Life marketplace. And these have been carefully curated by other Second Life residents. I'd really recommend these ones by the creator Battle Scars, who have a broad selection of eye-catching themed environments for you to instantly apply in your world. To install these particular ones, just unpack them from your received items. With any purchase environments, you'll still be able to make adjustments using the personal lighting controller, such as moving the sun position and tweaking the atmosphere and haze settings. These are going to be applied temporarily for your active session. Or if you want to make more permanent adjustments, just go to your fixed environment editor like we did earlier. EAT provides a powerful tool for residents, creators and photographers and anyone who wants to infuse more richness and authenticity to their experience in the virtual world. So why not give it a try and see what kind of stunning environments that you can create. If you're interested in learning more about Second Life and all of its features, be sure to check out the SL YouTube channel. There's something for everyone. I hope the video was useful. Take care everybody and thanks for watching.